Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 story, Rebuilding Helsingborg, with me, Daniel. We're back today for part 8 and we are back earlier than planned for a Swedish Cup quarter final. But it isn't just a Cup quarter final we're here for, because in the competition now, none of last year's top 3, including Malmo, who we put out in the group stages, are left in this tournament. So we have now got a great opportunity against some sides with whom we'd expect to be on a fairly level playing field in the league this season to get through and try and win a trophy, which would be an epic achievement. And I don't know how it works over here. Maybe get some European football. If you're looking forward to finding out how we get on though, and whether there's any more transfer news to reflect on, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. The Hemel save is back tomorrow with a big summer transfer special. Please do check that one out in the eye above if you haven't already. There's also links to the Twitch channel, the football podcast, and the merchandise store too. You can support the show as a channel member by clicking the join button down below. But of course we are back not just for the Swedish Cup, it is still the summer transfer window too, or the winter transfer window as it is in Sweden, it's still fooling me even in the second season. But let's have a look first at this cup quarter final draw because no AIK, no Nurkapin who won the league last year and no Malmo. We have got a big chance here. The highest ranked team left in it are Gothenburg, who finished fourth last year in the Swedish league. And they've got the best draw against lower league opposition. But the other six, really, were all fairly evenly matched. And if we look at where we are at the moment, or how the media preview is changing for the season, we are suddenly expecting to become a very good side here because we're coming up against the team today expected to finish 12th in a league the media think we're better than them and of the sides left there's no one that the media expect to finish in the top five who are still in this tournament i think we've got a great chance i do recognize another new sign in as well christopher nordvelt the aik keeper he's a former swansea man and just indicates how far off we are but if we have a look at the schedule since you were last with me we play two games off camera they're the other two games in the Swedish Cup group, and we got through pretty comfortably in the end. You obviously joined me for that 1-0 win against Malmo, where we were gritty, we were strong, we were solid defensively, and just about nicked a win. We then beat Sandvikens of the third tier by four goals to two. They scored a couple of absolute screamers, by the way, but Vanden Herk with a brace, a lurper, and Froj a left back on his debut managed to get us a comfortable win. Then a 0-0 draw against Ikeb Braga. It wasn't the best performance. We were the better side still. And we somehow late on nearly got shocked because it was a brilliant strike in the last minute. And Anders Lindegaard made a super save up to his right. If it wasn't for that, we would have gone out and Braga would have gone through. So really pleased to have snuck past them. We have, though, picked up some injury troubles along the way. If we go and have a look at the current injuries, most importantly, Willem Lerper will miss this one and it will be a race against time to get fit for the semi-finals should we make it next weekend. We've got Davison struggling to get back on the left, the same for Lundgren on the right. So we are a little bit down to the bare bones in certain areas, particularly out wide. But the director of football is trying to address that because... We haven't been able to sign all of them because I want to keep a fairly small squad and I don't want to block the development of youngsters this year. But if this were a head coach save in its truest form, I would be delighted with Grangvist as my director of football. Some of the players he's made bids for are really good and some of the ones he continues to try and sign are pretty interesting to say the least. Not least of all this man, Stefan Hadjin, who he's put in a bid for. It's another left back, another Serbian left back for 200 grand. Look how good he is though. He's really spotting high quality players here that would improve the squad. So depending on what wage he's offered him and what other players might be available, I think I'd probably do this deal and then sell Davidson who's over 30 now, who plays for the Faroe Islands, who comes back from the international breaks tired and has had a few more injury problems in the last six months. But for me, Hadjin looks a superstar really impressed with the players he's looking out for there was a young french player as well who we didn't end up signing i'm gonna to have to go and find him in the scout reports because we had a few too many players in the position and particularly young ones it was another one that really could have made it at the highest level and this is the guy i'm referring to 21 year old frenchman and he's a really good attacking midfielder but he didn't offer anything that Ali didn't. He didn't offer anything that Kaid, the youngster, didn't. And when we've got brilliant young players in both wide areas, I didn't want to sign someone else that would take away their development. And I couldn't afford to make him the highest paid player at the club when he wasn't going to be a certain starter. But either way, 
These are very good players, the director of football spotting, and Andreas Grangfist is deserving an awful lot of credit. If we go to the transfer news that has been done though, we have had a few more leave the club. Obviously you were with me last time when we signed Tursic as an emergency for the next game, but since then we've let a few leave the club. So young Carlson has gone out on loan, he's not very good. The same applies to Leo Jansen who went out the week after. We've also then let William Westerlund go, he's a young centre-half with more potential but not really showing any of it yet. And then the one from last year's youth intake, the left wing back who had a massive ability, but not a huge amount of potential. Well, he's gone on loan as well. Alphonse Silferberg, the left wing back. And he's improving already, so maybe dynamic potential could be his friend as we move along this season. So I'm intrigued to see how they all get on, but no signs of any other outs yet. Not from the first team, but of course that might change because if we get that other left back, we can then loan out Frush, and we can also let Davidson go permanently. And to be fair to him, at 30, he's starting to decline physically, and he's not better than either of the two that are threatening to be our starters. So I think that's where the change is going to come this summer. Of course, we're keeping the wage bill under control. Of course, we're not as consistent and as high quality as the top two or three. We've got a real chance to be competitive, and if we could take the bonus of winning the Swedish Cup, that would be phenomenal. Let's just see if the winners of this get into Europe at all. Have a look at the rules. So the winner of the final qualifies for the Europa Conference second qualifying round. This has just become a lot more important. It's Helsingborgs v Hamstad. Hopefully we'll be in the semi-final after this. We've mentioned our problems at home before. Let's see if they arise today. 7,000 tickets sold. We're going to go for experience in goal. But let me adjust the rest of the team. We'll be back in a minute to run through it. Right then, this is the team we're going to go for today. One slight fitness issue on Kasper Vidal, but this game's too important to leave him out. We have got a few problems caused by this cup, which is where it's scheduled in pre-season. We've now not been able to get friendlies in, which means the backup team is struggling for fitness. That affects Lundberg, who comes into the team today with Karjalain and Knackered, and with Lerper injured. Lingman's struggling a little bit, but I'm going to gamble and start him. And Tersic at left back just returning. But if the other one comes in before the semis, it's probably worth the gamble anyway. We have been able to get the return of Person, who was out injured for a year. He came on in the last game. And we've got a few high quality players on the bench and a few youngsters who are getting a lot better. But our 11 for today in full is Lindegaard in goal. Granath and Tersic the fullbacks with Weyberg alongside Vidal at centre half. Alma Jed, Lingman and Henriksen the midfield three. And then Lundberg, Ali and Vandenhoek the front three. No one other than Vandenhoek in his starting lineup has scored yet this year. The long throw has not yet been effective. I'll be really hoping that changes today. Maybe Kasper Vidal can get on the end of one. Let's go into it though, the Swedish Cup quarter final. And remarkably, we're just three games from Europe. Well, two changes from the last game for us as we bring in a new left back Tersic and we bring in Lundberg on the right wing. Not many recognisable names in the squad. Pedro Ribeiro we were linked with briefly in the summer, but he's 31 and I wanted to prioritise youngsters. So we get into the first half hoping we can pick up the win. They're going to be a test. We're pretty evenly matched according to the media. But if we're at our best, hopefully we can just get out on top. Let's try and make the most of set pieces and the big crowd that's going to be supporting us today. Well, early doors. We are back for the long throw from Granat. We see nothing from it so far. And that seems to be happening a bit too much with the long throw. I've got someone challenging the keeper, but they're going straight into his arms. And I don't know how to direct the long throw away from them, to be honest. So let me know in the comments if you've got any suggestions for that. Because it just seems he's throwing it into the arms of the keeper every time we see a highlight. As Tersic brings it in from the left-hand side. To Kasper Vidal at the back, probably not going to have 90 minutes in him, which is all the more important we get a lead now, as Lundberg goes to Granat. Has been a confident, composed start regardless, as Lundberg gets down the right again, towards the byline, cuts it back to Hendrickson, into the box to Lingman. That is a fabulous goal. Started with Tersic at left back, worked all the way through the pitch, and Lingman making a run into the box, makes it 1-0 with 5 on the clock. As we're back with a goal kick for the visitors, Halmstad's with a long ball downfield. Headed away by Vidal to Lundberg, who's actually started this game pretty well. Chips forward to Vandenhoek, he's played on by the right back I think, but he can't take advantage. Shot straight at a keeper, probably should have done better with it. But it's behind for a corner kick and now Vidal can rise at the back post as Lingman puts the corner in. There he is, right on cue. Kasper Vidal with his first of the season. Lingman turns provider this time. 
and Helmstad, I'm guessing, are a slightly shorter team because they're having real trouble with the set pieces as we're finally doing a bit of defending. A throw on the left for the visitors. Bernstein down the line. Chance for them to cross here. We've got men back, but it's into the front post. Weyberg heads clear. Dalberto brings it back at right back. Finds Allenson. Out to the right wing again. They have committed a lot of bodies forward, in fairness. There's five or six up there, and one of them gets in. Alstrand in behind. It's a good save from Lindegaard. Not the best defending from Granaf, but it's a corner kick, and we need to make our superiority count in the air here. Bernston takes the corner. Out swinger. At the back post, Ribeiro wins the header. But thankfully, it's over the bar. 15 gone. We're 2-0 up. But we have had our first warning sign. Well, five minutes to the break. It's been a very comfortable performance so far. I do wonder if we're going to regret not scoring more, particularly if we have to make those subs at the back later. Although we have scored more now. That is out of nothing. The other two were well worked or set pieces, whatever it might be. That one was absolute brilliance. Lingman nicks it on the left-hand side. He's provider again. What a game he's had. Chips it into Vanden Herk. And he just hits it on a half volley second time. It's a wonderful shot into the corner. Didn't have bags of pace on it, but the placement was exquisite. As Hendrickson gets it in the middle to Almajed, we are making real light work of Halmstad's here. And Vandenhoek finds Lundberg. Got to say Lingman's the start. A goal and two assists. It's been a brilliant performance from him, considering I thought about taking him out as well, as Granath gives it to Lundberg. Can we get a fourth before the break? Put us in dreamland, because... For all of our dominance in the league last year, for winning the title, as Lingman has scored again. The man is in sensational form. Granath chips it into him. He makes that late run from midfield again. No one's tracking him. No one's marking him. And he bookends the half with goals. Two for him, four for Helsingborg. And as I was saying a moment ago, we were dominant in the league last year. We won the title at a canter. But we didn't win a lot of games heavily. It was largely ones and twos. This has been a real class performance. We're given another 10 or 15 minutes. Vidal, Lingman and the likes can get their rest. And hopefully we're going to be in good shape for the semi-final. As we're back with the visitors camped in our half here. Five minutes gone in the second half and they're on the front foot with Bernstein. It's a really good save from Lindegaard. You can see Vidal starting to struggle physically. Same for Lingman and Almajed now. So we might have to be a little careful on the fitness front. Almajed clears the corner away. Vanden Herk chases. But the highlight ends before we get to see it. And we're back for a corner with Lingman. Into the back post. Will he get another assist? Not this time. Weyberg's shot's blocked and it's cleared downfield. Only as far as Granath though, who's completely unopposed. And this is turning into such a comfortable night. We've not had many of these in charge of this club. But with 25 to go, the changes can be made. It's definitely going to be Kasper Vidal. Person the youngster will come on. It's also going to be Lingman off. He'll be replaced by Valencia, the new sign-in. And then it's either Almajed or it's Granath. Granath we haven't got a natural replacement for, but he is the more tired. So I think it's going to have to be Almajed. He'll come off for, in fact, Valencia in the holding role. And then we'll bring on Neta by as well. The other midfield sign-in in a transfer window so far. Let's get embedded into the team. As we're 25 to go, it's Halmstad's in possession. The last thing we want is them to start scoring goals, as Granath makes the challenge, but it's forced wide. You know my superstition about having changes pending when they're on the front foot, and it will normally lead to a goal. That one's just over the bar, though. We get away with it. The subs are made. Hopefully, we can see this out comfortably. As our visitors are on the front foot again, they've got another free kick in our half, but they just work short this time. They're coming down the left, though, with not much pressure at all. Bernstein's got into Kroon. That is a real good chance. I mean, the commentary says it all. How has he missed it? I don't know. They don't know. I'm sure he won't know. But despite a couple of warning signs at the back, I mean, he expected goals. It's 1.3 to 0.9. There's not a lot in it. But somehow it's 4-0. We've been ruthless. We've taken our chances. And who cares how we've played? We're in the semi-final of the Swedish Cup. And we're now two games from Europe. Let's go and see who we get in the draw. And if it's going to be played as scheduled next weekend, we'll be back in a moment to watch the game. Well, another friendly cancelled because we have drawn the highest ranked side from last season in the semi-final of the cup. Got a burger at home and for the first time we've not been offered the chance to switch to home advantage. I guess that means they've got a bigger ground. It does. And they're obviously a good side. Look at the captain. Marcus Berg. I recognise that name. Where did he play in FM where he kept getting picked up? I'm sure it was around the Groningen or PSV years. He used to be one of those players you could sign really easily at the top level. 
He's still a very good player, despite losing a bit of his pace. Now on 91 caps for Sweden. That's a proper player. Let's have a look at who else they've got in the team, just in case there's any other stars. As another old head at the bottom I recognise, Oscar Vent, another Swedish international, 28 caps, one of the go-to left-backs when you were scrapping relegation in the Premier League a good 10 years ago in FM. He's a proper player, played years at Copenhagen and Gladbach, and is now at Gothenburg pulling strings. There's some very good players in that team, but... They're slightly older, and maybe we'll get our chance to put things right. We've got a slight knock to Hendrickson. We'll need to rest him for next week, but hopefully we'll be in good shape. We can get through to a Swedish Cup final. We're back for our semi-final and fitness test time, but today, another interesting offer from the director of football. End of contract for a 30-year-old. I'm not sure we're going to go through with it, but a Portuguese player. I'm not sure which club he's playing for. So he's playing for a club in Poland, and he's Portuguese. It's a very interesting signing it would be. I don't think he's going to be right for us and by the summer he will have declined a bit more too. But I really like what he's doing, I've got to be honest. On the subject of that, we've accepted a loan offer for Bergman so he may well be on his way out soon. He's one of the youngsters at the club. We're selling a left back Emil Hellman for nothing. He's not very good so it made sense. There is a 10% sell on fee in there. And then Jao Oliveira is potentially coming in. But we have made one big signing as well. Stefan Hadjin has now joined for 200,000. Davidson will be sold once he's back fit. But we've now got two very good left backs in their peak. And hopefully that stands us in good stead for the season. We'll also loan out the other young lad. That is Samuel Froge. He will be loaned out. There's few clubs who want him in the second tier. But we've got a big semi-final to worry about. So let's get this loan offer done. And we can now go and pick our 11 for the big semi-final. Hammer VV Elfsborg is the other game. We're playing the toughest game on paper. And away from home for the first time. Let's see how we get on. We're going to put the opposition instructions on. Of course, Marcus Berg is one of those. We're not going to switch to the younger keeper. But 18,000 fans in. This is going to be a hostile atmosphere. Gothenburg, a very well-supported club. Add to that, Lerper isn't fit. Langren and Davidson aren't fit. Kajalainen should be good enough to go on the bench now. He'll replace Benjamin Aqua. And we've also got Hadjin coming in. He will go onto the bench for his debut potentially too. So we stick with the same 11 at one last time. Why would I change it after that performance? Let's hope we can get the same outcome. Like this is going to be a lot tougher in a cauldron of an atmosphere away from home. Well, here are the lineups. Marcus Berg and Oscar Vent do both start. There's some other very good players in there as well. But we've got an opportunity to make it to a cup final, which I didn't expect this early. We've been massively helped by all of the biggest sides going out. But this, certainly one of the best follow sides. And these four teams are going to be so closely matched. We're probably just about the underdogs. But let's see how we get on in the first half. Lerper, probably going to be a big miss. Well, very different to our last game in the quarters. There's been nothing to separate us in the first 20 minutes and not really many chances. In the other game, though, Hammerby are ahead at home as Ingo Gothenburg for the first time is a great save from Lindegaard. Virtually all the home teams won in the quarters, so same sort of problem here. We are going to be underdogs. Home advantage is huge. Sanna's got the corner for the host as it's into the back post. Tersic heads away really well. Only to as far as Johansson on the edge of the box. Out to Sanna again. He's offside though. We survived the first big scare. But with 20 gone, we know we're in for a game here. As with half an hour on the clock, we've got our first chance with Lingman. Set piece! And it always delivers. This is why we dedicate so much training, so much time and so much energy into set pieces. Big ball from Lingman to the back post. It's not Kasper Vidal this time. It's Lundberg who's covering him for, for Lerper who we said we were going to miss on the right wing. Well, no, we're not, because his deputy has scored a brilliant header, as Granaf's got the ball at the back to Vidal. Plays to Lindegaard, the experienced keeper, and Weyberg. Not really seen a lot in this cup run of us just getting on the ball and playing short passing football, as we did so often to good effect last year. Oh, Hendrickson in the centre circle finds Lingman, and Vandenhoek back to his centre-half, Weyberg. He can come over halfway. No real pressure on the centre-backs. That long ball through, though, isn't the best. Johansson intervenes and gives it to his right-back. He can clear downfield. Plays fairly short. Aish turns on the ball, goes backwards again. And we're pressing them pretty high and pretty successfully. But Marcus Berg manages to set them free. Sana to Alam Nari. Over the top to Jensen on the left. Lindegaard's caught in no man's land. He's been forced back to the edge to Marcus Berg. That didn't look good enough to go into me. I think Lindegaard's made a bit of an error. It's 1-1. They're back on terms just before the break. 
and this place is now going to be rocking. Half time, it is all square. It is so, so evenly matched. But with us reliant on set pieces, I'm not sure we're going to come out on top here. Let's ask the lads to do the fans proud. Hopefully, we just get one or two more chances. Be a great day for the long throw to turn up as Granaf's got one on the right into the back post. Oh, the keeper's missed it. Tahar Ali nods into the empty net. I'm not even sure what he's doing up there. He's not supposed to be in the box. But it beats the keeper. It looked so, so comfortable for him. It wasn't really under any pressure. And he completely misses it. Ali nods in. And the set pieces deliver again. I thought it was just about to complain about the long throw going straight into the keeper's arms yet again. But what a gift that is. One mistake apiece from the keepers. 2-1 to us now overall. As third place to Villa. Don't concede from the kickoff. Please don't concede straight after getting the lead. As Vent goes inside to Thurn. To Jensen. To Thurn. We know they've got a threat. You can clearly see they're a good side. As Jensen picks it up on the left again. To Thurn. Through ball to Sanna. He's one on one. Oh, we've conceded from the bloody kickoff. It's so infuriating. You wait for the gift to go ahead. And the old adage that you're so vulnerable just after you've scored has come true yet again. Awful defending. 2-2. Two -two. It's one all in the other game. I don't think we're going to win this. We look more vulnerable from open play than they do. As they've got it on the right hand side again. To Alam Nari. In Twaish and Marcus Berg. The only thing we've got to hope for is some of their old legs maybe run out of steam. But it's through to Berg again. He's one on one. It's a good block from Vidal. Weyberg alongside him is having a shocker. We're going to encourage the lads. Try and get some confidence. But we just look so, so, so poor at the moment. Vidal heads away the corner. We're on the ropes as they've got it on the right again. Can they stay on side? I'm not sure if they can, but the highlight ends and we finally get a breather. Though we're back again with just over a quarter of the game to go as Lundberg's got it on the right-hand side. Just preparing the subs as soon as this one's done as Almajed finds Lundberg into Lingman. Van den Herk to Ali who's got acres of space. Tahar Ali! Oh, he's turning up for the big occasion. Got away with a big gift for his first goal tonight. But my words, that one is a proper finish. Lovely run, the defender's caught in no man's land. And it's 3-2 to Helsingborg. What a tie this is turning into. Let's see what subs we can make because I'm tempted to maybe put in Tersic at centre-half. Because the other one's not playing well, Weyberg. We could put Tersic there and bring on Hadjim for his debut. It's a risk, I'm aware. We're also going to take off Vandenhoek and replace him with Karja Linen up front. And then I'm going to take off Hendrickson in centre midfield with Johan Valencia getting a run out for the end. 22 minutes plus stoppage time to go. It's 3-2. It's anyone's game. But at the moment, we're just about sneaking it. Well, five minutes left. Are we on the verge of the unthinkable? And how early do we go to the time wasting? It's been a very even match. A draw would be a fair result. But we've nicked it. And it's through a pretty catastrophic goalkeeping error, if we're being honest. The second goal came from that with the long throw. Poor defending for the third goal. But who cares? We're in the Swedish Cup final. And that is a bonus I did not expect to have in our first season and a half. We've told the media how proud we are of the team. And we will now be coming up against Hammerby for a chance to get into Europe and to win our first trophy at the top level. That game doesn't take place till the end of May, so we can focus on the start of the league season for now. But what a finish, what a debut for Hadjin, and what a surprise we've had at the start of this year. We will be back in a couple of days' time for Degafors and Varnamo, our fellow promoted side on the first two days of the season. If you did enjoy this episode, though, a brilliant run, which will culminate with a Swedish Cup final at the end of May, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content. Let me know in the comments what you think of our performances, and more so the signings that have come in. And have you ever had a better director of football than this in FM22, finding players from here, there and everywhere, and making some really interesting offers? If you want to stay up to date with our other save from Hemel Hempstead Town, you can find a link to that playlist in the eye above. We'll be back with a transfer special for that one tomorrow, and we're moving into a brand new stadium. It is a big moment in that save. There's also links up there to the Twitch channel, the football podcast, and the merchandise store too. And I'll see you here again next time for the first day of the league season as we get excited for a Swedish Cup final.